the tenets back-to-back episodes of Forensic Files on Four TV. On yesterday's show, you saw me talking to the attorney for Kelsey Peterson, a 25-year-old teacher who is charged with crossing into Mexico to have sex with an eighth-grade student. A few minutes into that interview, that lawyer, James Martin Davis, began making statements about the minor that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And for the first time in the history of this program, I cut him off on purpose. Take a look. James, if he's 13 years old now, I'm on, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on whether or not, I don't know this age thing, and I'm sure that that is something that you and your investigators are working hard to try to clear up. But you have to tell me, if he is a child, how does a child consent to go with a grown woman to go have sex? Help well, I resent that the term child. I mean, I, you're babyfying this kid. This kid is a Latino mas, a machismo Teenager. Wait a minute, I mean, hold you know, on. James, wait a minute you know, now. Is, is Excuse me, my little my little antenna went off, counselor, when you say he's a Latino, what? He, very machismo. I mean, he's a, he's he's manly. Who, who is there? Okay, now you done now you done made me mad. I'm gonna have to touch you off. What do you mean he's manly? If he is under 16, he is still a child according is to the law. Is there anybody in the world that has a higher sex drive than a, a teenage boy? Am I on the television with racist? I mean, Y'all put me on TV with somebody gonna make a racist statement on my show? A, I don't think so, sir. Let me tell you something. A teenage how boy? Dare how is that you? racist? No, how dare you call somebody a Latino? Latino machismo, as if to suggest that the young man, just because of his Hispanic background, ha is is of some nah, mess. Nah, nah, no, nah. you know what? Goodbye. Get rid of him. I'm not having that. Not on the show that still bears my name. That will not happen. Ooh, Lord, I was mad. Some of you agreed with my reaction to Mr. Davis, and some of you took me to task for it. So I invited Amy Peck, the attorney for the student, and Mark Lamont Hill, a professor of cultural anthropology at Temple University, to help me sort it out. Mark, I'll get to you in just one minute. Let me go to Amy. Amy so wanted to be on the show live today, but they're having bad weather over in her neck of the woods. You were in on the conversation with Mr. Davis, and clearly it was not about a teenager's sex drive. He made a racist statement calling this kid a Latino machismo. What was your reaction to his statements, Amy? Well, I gotta say, on the one hand, I consider the source, but on the other hand, racial stereotyping has been an undertone to this whole case. And you add to the fact that uh, my client is undocumented and a Mexican boy, and you have a powerful combination of stereotypes that really have created the perfect cover for bigoted behavior, witness what happened yesterday. So Amy, just so that I'm clear, this man is basically saying because he is an illegal Mexican kid who may be a little bit bigger than other kids, he is not deserving of the same types of protections that the law would give a little young white child? Is that what he's trying to say? That's the way I read it, it makes me sick. I was disgusted by the entire thing. I want to be very clear. Is there any question in your mind that the young man that we're talking about is 13 years old? There is no question. I, you know, I've been there. I've seen him. He's an eighth grader. He's not even that big. He's about five foot six. He's maybe 140 pounds. And I got to say, I have a son who's younger than Fernando. My son is 13 as well, but a few months younger. My son's 5'9 and 150 pounds. So, you know, let's get real here. He's still your kid. When you're talking about your child, that's why the law protects a 13-year-old and says that when you are 25 years old, you cannot have sex with a 13-year-old. And as, as far as I've seen the law, and I checked it, there is no illegal alien exception to the you can have sex with a kid rule. Well, that's right. And, and the fact that you're undocumented apparently makes you a punching bag, though, which is all the more reason why he should be here in the U.S. to defend himself. Do you see this case as an uphill battle, Amy? Because I'm certainly seeing it. If this is the attitude that is prevalent in that area, you are in some trouble, Counselor. Well, um, you know, it is a very poor political landscape right now if you are an undocumented individual in the United States. And this case really sets it up perfectly because 
right now the message that the government is giving to everybody out there is boy it's okay to prey upon undocumented individuals because we don't care about you if you're victimized and and really that is a very poor message and i think we're better than that i know we're better than that amen at least as long as i get a chance to sit on this couch with the privilege of coming in people's neighborhood i point it out each and every day please keep us informed of what is going on with this case amy because you know we are going to follow it thank you again for joining us you're welcome i want to bring in Professor Mark Lamont Hill, because I come to him with these. I got heated, Mark. I got upset about it. Um, why do these stereotypes still exist when it comes to something like this? Well, because there's this whole legacy of racism in this country and in the broader world that suggests that black and brown children don't have the right to be innocent. They don't have the right to be children. Very often, we think of them as short adults rather than people who are entitled to the things that little white kids are entitled to. So when you have an incident where a little black girl is hurt or where a 13-year-old boy is victimized by a teacher, the sense here is that, oh, they're old enough. They're, they're like grown people. You know, they want sex. They have sexual desires. She's a hot, she, he's a hot-blooded Latino male or she's a, a hot little black girl or whatever it is. And so we don't then think of them as people who can be victims, and they are. And you know, I was sitting here and I thought to myself a scene from one of my very favorite movies, A Time to Kill. And I remember Samuel Jackson playing the role of a father whose young black child was sexually assaulted by white men. And I remember one of the arguments made by the defense attorney was to close your eyes and reverse the races. And I guarantee you if we did that, if the protagonist in this case, the defendant, the accused, was a Latin man and the person who was the victim in the case was a young white girl, we would not be having this discussion. Do you think, Mark? We, of course we wouldn't. They'd be under the jail right now. But the difference here is that black and brown people and little girls who are black and brown, in particular little boys who are black and brown, they don't make compelling victims to people because this history of controlling images and stereotypes about these people suggests that they're oversexed, they always want, they can never be victims, they're not innocent, they're immoral. And when you have these stereotypes that still govern our perceptions, then when, when the roles are as they are, nobody seems to care. And immigration is a big issue that we are facing in this country. We're going to have to deal with this on so many levels. But I don't want us to be a country where you can treat undocumented people, or if you want to be mean-spirited and just call them illegal aliens, you can't treat people as if the law does not apply. You can't say, I'm going to hang a sign on someone who is in our country illegally. Come beat me up. Come rob me. Come sexually assault me because I don't have access to the courts and no one's going to blame you for it. That's exactly right. And I think the issue here is we have to remember that these are people we're talking about. When we call them aliens, it's easier not to think of them as people who have needs and desires and feelings and whose interests need to be protected. So part of the language that we use to talk about people helps shape the way they're treated. And so in this case, this, in addition to being a, a Latino machismo boy, as, as the lawyer said yesterday, he's also an, an, what, what he calls an illegal immigrant who isn't entitled in his mind to the basic protections under the law. And that's a tragic and devastating set of circumstances that we need to change. And I think everybody needs to always remember that everybody who's in America came from somewhere exactly some of us were brought here some of us came here but none of us would be in a country like this without each other I just really wanted to talk about this again clearly I'm going to be speaking on this in my open letter professor Hill I thank you for being with me as my usual. pleasure my pleasure I'll get the last word on this topic a little later in my open letter but when we come back two moms with husbands serving in Iraq and Afghanistan decide